Can we welcome Seth to the stage with a nice round of applause? All right, Seth, what we've been doing so far is we're using the face painting to tell some different stories from different places. And I'm particularly trying to tell some stories about why things are the way they are and look the way they are. Sit right there. And Seth, your face is going to be a real surprise, actually. I'm going to have you turn around and face me. And nobody's going to know what you are until I turn you around at the very, very end. You ready for this? Tilt your head up. Close your eyes gently and stay relaxed. And all you need to do is sit nice and still and relax like that. Good. Some of this will tickle, but none of this will hurt, okay? Now, as I said, um, the faces I paint, you know, images like these, they come from a long time ago, some of them. And they do come from all the way around the world. This particular story, and the face that goes with it, is going to take us to Asia, Southeast Asia. I first found a folktale in a book collecting stories from Southeast Asia, and I like that story a lot. Then I used it and I changed it a bit to make it into the story that I tell today. And this is a story that goes back to that time before houses and cities, that time when we people, we live right there in the forests. To a time when we were part of the world of nature, sharing it with the animals. And it's not surprising that from that time, so many of our stories are about the animals. About why there are so many animals. About, well, why they look different and act different all the time. And especially, very important, why an animal might help you or hurt you when you met it in the forest. Seth, this is the story of the first time a man met a crocodile. You see, once there was a man, the very first man, and he was walking through the very first forest. And his name was Mei King. Now Mei King was looking for wood to build his fire. And Mei King was walking by the river when he came upon a crocodile, which was lying there just sleeping in the sun, uh, which crocodiles will do. Now Mei King had never seen a crocodile before. And it was lying so still that he made a mistake. He thought it was a log. And he picked the crocodile up and he carried it back to his village. And then, well, he threw a crocodile into his fire. <laughs> now you can imagine. When he threw crocodile into the fire, crocodile woke up, jumped out of the fire, and ran away, away from the village of man. When crocodile got back to his river, oh, now crocodile became very upset because he could see his reflection in the water. He could see that his beautiful green skin, ah, it had gotten all scarred and ugly and bumpy. So crocodile was very upset. Now the next day in the forest was a hot day, and this day May King was walking again through the forest, down to the river, and he wanted to take a swim. But when he got to the river, he saw an unusual looking log floating on the river. Now May King, he remembered his mistake from the day before. He remembered when he saw the log and he thought it was a crocodile. And he wondered to himself, hmm, is this a log or is this that crocodile I met? So he asked, he said, um, excuse me, are you a log or are you a crocodile? Well, as you can probably guess, it was crocodile floating on the river like a log, which crocodiles will do. And crocodile recognized the man who had thrown him in the fire. And he thought that this was his chance, his chance to get even. So he answered, he said, I'm a log. May King was not convinced. So he asked, he said, uh, well, excuse me, Mr. Log, would you like to go swimming with me today? Certainly, said Crocodile. And Crocodile, he began to swim over to the riverbank where Mickey King was standing. Now, when Mickey King saw that, he laughed. He laughed out loud, he laughed. Ha, 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 silly Crocodile, I tricked you. Logs can't swim. And Mickey King knew not to go swimming himself that day and had a very good laugh all the way back to his village. Now the next day in the forest was hotter still. And this day, this day when Mae King came down to the river, he was very determined to take a swim. But as you can imagine, first he looked very carefully. He looked up, he looked down, he looked left, he looked right. He looked all around the river and he did not see any crocodile. He did not even see any unusual looking logs. So this day, Mae King thought it would be safe to go swimming. But let me tell you, if you haven't guessed, crocodile was waiting for him. Crocodile was sitting 
on the very bottom of the river with only the little tip of his nose sticking up. <laughs> Which crocodiles will do. And this is why May King did not see crocodile at all. So as May King, standing on the riverbank, got ready for his swim, crocodile, well, <laughs> crocodile, he got ready for May King, sitting on the very bottom of the river. He opened his big crocodile mouth. When May King jumped into the river, he jumped right into the open mouth of Crocodile, who closed his mouth with May King inside, and Crocodile, he was very, very happy. <laughs> said the Crocodile. At this point in our folk tale, we need to take a moment to discuss the nature of a Crocodile. For you see, Crocodile is so often showing up in stories like this. And when he does, he so often wants to eat somebody or other. But let me ask you, is this the crocodile's fault? This crocodile asked to be the villain in our stories? Was a crocodile who decided that he should have such a long mouth with so many sharp teeth? Oh, and speaking of his teeth, I should also point out that the crocodile in the story, well, it might really be an alligator. Because you know crocodiles and alligators they can look so very much alike. In fact, the experts say that sometimes they look so much alike that the only way to tell them apart is by <laughs> examining their teeth. And I, for one, I leave all that teeth examining to the crocodile and alligator experts. Now, it is true that May King, inside the mouth of the crocodile, well, he had a very, very good look at his teeth, didn't he? Ah, uh, but we know from the story that May King, he was not a crocodile or alligator expert. So you will have to forgive your narrator if the crocodile in the story was really an alligator. Now, I will not ask you to forgive the crocodile, though, for in truth, he did want to eat May King. But in his defense, I should point out that in the right time, in the right place, you know, even a crocodile can be very useful. Just ask Peter Pan. So while we might not forgive crocodile for wanting to eat May King, we might have some sympathy for him when I tell you what happened next. For there was Crocodile sitting in the river and May King inside his mouth. And Crocodile, as I said, well, he was very, very happy. <laughs> when from inside his mouth, he heard a voice. Silly Crocodile, said May King. Yesterday when I tricked you, I laughed. Ha, ha, ha. Today you trick me, and all you can say is, mm, mm, mm. Well, you know, Crocodile did not want to be outdone by this man, so he opened his big crocodile mouth, and he let out a big crocodile laugh. Ha, 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 ha. And of course, May King, he just jumped out and escaped, and I can assure you, May King, he had a good laugh all the way back to the village. So this folktale, it explains for us why crocodiles, you know, their skin is so ugly and bumpy. It tells us why they are so often very, very angry with men. And it tells us why crocodiles, well, they never, ever laugh. And if you don't believe me, you can ask May King, who has somehow once again wound up inside the mouth of the crocodile. But how he got there and how he gets out, well, that's a story for another day. Seth, are you ready to see what you look like if you were a crocodile? With a man inside the crocodile's mouth? <laughs> Can we give my volunteer a very nice round of applause? That's a long story to sit through and you sat so still for me, thank you. I'll let you go back to the seat, just don't eat anybody, okay? So folks, this is the Transformation Show. We got time for another story or two and I need another brave volunteer.